Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is Solving Exponential Equations. This is part one. In fact, I really should say this is solving elementary uh, exponential equations or basic uh, exponential equations because what we're going to do in this lesson is introduce uh, a method of solving these exponential equations that uh, using the knowledge that we have up until this point. But a little bit later, when we get to logarithms, we'll have a much more powerful method of solving exponential equations. And when we get to logarithms, we'll be able to show you how to do that. But here in this lesson, we can certainly solve a lot of exponential equations using the knowledge that we have up until this point. And by now you know exponential functions, which we covered in the last lesson, are really and truly one of the most important class of functions in all of math and science uh, and engineering. Everything from nuclear, uh, nuclear processes to population dynamics to, to uh, savings and investments and all, all uh, additional uh, uh, applications that we talked about in the last lesson. So solving exponential equations really are applicable to all of those fields, which is every field essentially. So the first thing we need to do before we can show you how to solve these equations, I need to go over one little property of the exponential function that's important for you to know. You should know now that the exponential function in your mind, you should know what it looks like. It starts small and it gets very large uh, often when it starts to, to, to kind of go around the corner there and start to go vertical. It's a one-to-one -one function. That means for every one input, you only get one output. It passes the horizontal line test and the vertical line test. So just to kind of break that down just a little bit more before we solve these equations, I need to kind of make sure you understand what I mean by one-to-one -one function, exponential function is a one-to-one -one function. So for instance, you know, it could be two to the power of x, but it could be any base in, in, in general, any exponential function. They're always gonna cross the y-axis at one here. They're gonna start, they're gonna go through that point, and then they're gonna go up something like this. Now, what we basically mean by one-to-one -one is that for every input, these are the inputs we're putting into this function, we go up and we only get one output. So if we pick, for instance, you know, this point right here, this x value could be, you know, seven or something, then we go off here, and then we intersect, and then we read the value off here, and there'll be two to the power of seven. That's what this is gonna be right here. But for every input that we give, there's only one output. In other words, the uh, function doesn't have any weird wiggles or curves to give you more than one output. It is only one input to one output, and that means it's a one-to-one -one function. And because of this property, because of the shape of the exponential function, by the way, even if it went and flipped the other direction, starting high and coming low, like we talked about, still a one-to-one -one function. So for any exponential function, with the same base. The following, uh, the following thing is true, okay? If we have some base, could be two, like this thing, could be three, could be five, whatever. Uh, raised to the power, we're gonna call it a power P, is equal to B to the power of Q, that's supposed to be a Q right there, um, if and only if P is equal to Q. Right? So what this means is that if you're comparing two functions, right, and two exponential functions with the same base, then P, b to the power of something is equal to b to the power of something else only if these exponents are equal. It's a little bit of a trivial statement, but it's only true because it's a one-to-one -one function like this. So just in some examples, you're gonna kind of laugh a little bit when you see these examples. But what I mean by that is two to the power of three, is equal to two to the power of three. You might say, well, of course it is. It's exactly the same thing. But what this is basically saying is when you have kind of two exponential functions with the same base, the only way that the points on the curves can be the same is if the exponents are also the same. So if you have a different exponential function, three to the power of 16 is equal to three to the power of 16. Same base, if you imagine two different exponential curves, you plug in a value of 16, you read the values off, these guys are equal because this is a one-to-one -one function. All right, and so in general, if you have a base of, let's say a nine to the power of x is equal to the nine to the power of x only because these exponents are equal. These curves are the same only uh, because these exponents are equal there. Now we're gonna use this property to solve, I know it seems a little bit silly in the beginning, but we're gonna solve some exponential equations here. So the very first one is very, very simple. So simple that you could actually come up with the answer without even doing much. But let's take a look at this. What if you have an equation eight to the power of x 
is equal to two. Now, for those of you, you know, very clever, you could probably look at this and you could, you could just figure out in your head probably what the power would be there. When you see the answer, you'll understand, oh yeah, that's what, what it has to be. But for those of the rest of us, like me, that can't look at things and see what the answer is, we have to do work. Now what this is saying is that because the exponential function is one to one, and because if you have the same base on both sides of the equal sign, the only way this thing holds true as an equality is if the exponents are also equal, then one way to solve this equation is to try to make, you have an exponential function on the left hand side and a number on the right, you want to basically realize that eight to the power of x is really equal to two to the power of one. This is another way of writing what's above. The implied one here is, I'm just writing it out for you. If there's a way for us to make that eight to have a base of two, then we could equate the left and the right hand side like this. Think about what, how can you write eight? Eight can be written as two to the power of three. Would you agree? Because two times two is four times two is eight. So I can write that as two to the power of three to the x power is equal to two to the first. This, the, the math between this and this should be rock solid. All I've done is taken that base and I've rewritten it in, in terms of two to the third power. Why did I rewrite it like that? Well, it's because I have a two on the other side of the equal sign. You'll see in a minute why that's important. All right, so now I have an exponent raised to an exponent. So this is equal to two to the power of three times x is three x is equal to two to the power of one. Now you see, it looks silly right here when I write it down, two to the power of three is equal to two to the power of three. But now you understand why it's that way. What it's saying is if I have an expo exponential on one side with a base of two in this case, and I have another exponential on the other side of the equal sign with the same base, then the only way these things are equal is if the exponents are also equal, just like these exponents are equal, and these exponents are equal, and these exponents are equal. If the bases are equal, then the only way the equality can hold is if the exponents are equal. And what that means is I can say right away then that 3x must be equal to one. We must set the exponents equal. And that means that x must be equal to one third. This is what you would circle on your paper x is equal to one third. So when you were given the original equation, eight to the power of x, we have to solve for the power of x. And by solving and going and making these bases uh, the same across the equal sign and equating the exponent, we figure out that the exponent must be one third. Now here in the beginning, it's very, very important for us to try to check our work, just to make sure we understand why. So we're gonna take this answer, we're gonna stick it back in here. Eight to the power of x must be qu equal question mark to two. I'm gonna put the value of one third in here, equal question mark to two. But what is a one third power? A one third power is a cube root. So what you're really doing on the left hand side is a cube root of eight. And when you do a tree here, two times four is eight, and this is two times two is eight, you're looking for triplets because it's a cube root and you have a two. So what you found is that yes, two is equal to two, so by plugging in an exponent of one third, taking the cube root, uh, that is the exponent that satisfies this equation. Remember, you always get an answer back, you should always be able to check your answers. It doesn't matter if it's exponential equations or other kinds of equations that we've solved in the past. All right? Every one of these problems is essentially gonna follow the same kind of deal. We're going to try to make the bases the same across the equal sign to set these things equal. So what if you have 27, to the power of two times x. Now notice the exponent is not just a number or a variable, it has two times a variable. This is still an exponential function because the variable is in the exponent, is equal to three. We wanna solve for the value of x. How do we do that? Well, we recognize that 27 and three are kind of related. How do you know? Because if you know your multiplication tables, you know that 27 can be written as three to the power of three. How do you know that? because three times three is nine, and then nine times three, again, is 27. So you can write this as three to the power of three. This is all still raised to the two x power, and that's equal to three. Now we have an exponent raised to an exponent, so it's three to the three times two is now six x, and that's equal to three. And now that we have the bases across the equal sign the same, the only way this can be true is if six x has to be equal to the exponent over here, which is just an implied one. So x is the one sixth power x is the one sixth power. So that's what you would circle on your exam. Now again, we're not gonna check all of these things, but let's go in the beginning and try to take this guy and plug it back in here. Here we have 27 
to the two times x power, x was one six, so it's two times one six, equal question mark three. So here you have two times a sixth, so you have 27, two over six is just one third when you simplify the fraction, equal question mark to three. But you know that the one third power is just a cube root, and you know that 27 can be written as three times three times three. You're looking for triplets, so then evaluating the cube root, you say that three is equal to three, check. So that's why one sixth works as a solution. Again, we're not gonna check every one of these. I'm just showing you generally how you would do it. All right, now I'm gonna pause for just a second and say now that we've done both of these problems, uh, you see the commonality in what we're doing. We're trying to look and see if it's possible to raise, to, to make the left-hand exponential have the same base as whatever is on the right-hand side. Here we took the 27 and we tried to make it have the same base as what's on the right-hand side because when they have the same bases on, on, on the both sides of the equal signs, then we can equate the exponents here if and only if the exponents are equal if the bases are also the same. Now this works for these very special problems. But let's just say, what if the equation was 28 to the 2x power? There's no way that I can take 28 and write it as a power of three. Well, okay, there's not a way to do it and have whole numbers with exponents, which is what we're trying to do here. So there's not gonna be a way to say, well, if, I, if this was 28 or if this was 29 or if this was 30 or something like that, I wouldn't be able to write it as three to the power of something because three cubed is 27 and three to the fourth power is something totally totally different, right? So because it's 27, I'm able to do it, but if it was 29 or 40 or 42 or something else, I wouldn't be able to do it like this. So these solution techniques are kind of for the basic problems because they're set up. Later on, we're gonna learn about the concept of a logarithm. A logarithm is kind of the opposite function. It's called the inverse function of an exponential. And a logarithm, once we learn what they are, is gonna allow us to solve any of these exponential equations, no matter if we can write the basis you know, perfectly like we're doing here. But for now, we're gonna, not gonna worry about that. We're gonna learn how to solve these problems where the bases are chosen carefully to, to make it easy for us. I shouldn't say to make it easy for us, but just a certain subclass of problems that we can solve a little bit easier. What if we have eight to the power of x is equal to one fourth and we wanna solve this? We're gonna pick up the pace a little bit. Now, people get confused when you have this, uh, this fraction over here. So let's just try to work with one, one side of the equal sign at a time. Okay, one fourth is one over, you can write that as two squared. And you know that one, uh, one over two squared can also be written as two to the power of negative two. So now you see you've transformed the problem from this to this. These are exactly the same thing. And what you want is a base on the same side, of both sides of the equal sign of the same, to be the same number, in this case, two because we know that eight can be also be written as two to the power of three, still all raised to the x, and two to the power of negative two. So now that we have this, we can write this as two to the power of three x, multiplying the exponents together, is two to the negative two. You see how we went from this, which looks completely unrelated, down to where the bases are exactly the same here, and now we can just do the final nail in the coffin here and say that the exponent three x must be equal to negative two. So x must be equal to negative two divided by three, getting this guy by itself, and you have negative two thirds for the power. And I promise you, if you take this and put it in here, and then you're gonna have to remember how we evaluate exponents with a fractional exponent, you have to raise to the power of two, take the cube root, that kind of thing. In fact, you can kind of see it. If you put it in here, you can take the, um, well, you know what, I don't wanna do it in my, in my head. I'd rather you get a sheet of paper and that way we don't lose anybody. But if you take that exponent in and go through and do the steps that we learned with rational exponents, how to evaluate this as an exponent, you're gonna find the answer is one fourth, right? So I encourage you to go off and do that. All right, all right, let's go ahead and crank it up and go off to the next problem. What if we have three to the power of x is one over 27? All right, same kind of thing. 27, we know how we can write that in terms of a base of three. It's gonna be three to the power of three. But then we can bring this upstairs and make it three to the power of x is three to the power of negative three. And now the bases are the same. We can just simply say that x is equal to negative three and you don't have to do anything else. All you were trying to do is figure out what x was equal to and you have your answer. All right. Uh, now this one stumps people in the beginning, but it's not any harder. What if we have eight to the power of two plus x is equal to two? Now it might look a little weird for your exponent to have a plus sign in it, but trust me, exponents can have anything in there. 
when you get down the road in math, you'll find that exponents can have entire equations, almost like long, giant expressions with parentheses and all kinds of things, things up in the exponent. When you get to calculus, you'll figure out that exponents can have integration and all kinds of other advanced math we'll learn later. You can have all of that stuff inside of an exponent. So a little plus sign, it, it, yes, it looks a little weird at first, but just kind of get used to the idea that that can, that can happen. Now we're going to write the 8 as 2 to the power of 3. This is still raised to the 2 plus x power. And now we have to multiply these, but you're saying 3 times the uh, expression 2 plus x, so you have to distribute it in. So what you're going to get is 6 plus 2x. Make sure you understand, um, because, let me see if I want to write this explicitly. I think I do. Instead of writing it like this, just to make sure we don't lose anybody, we're going to multiply this out as 3 times 2 plus x. And then we're going to multiply it through, so we're going to get 2 to the 3, I'm sorry, 6 uh, plus 3x. 6 plus 3x is equal to 2. The bases are now the same, and so we equate the exponents. The exponent is this entire thing, 6 plus 3x um, is equal to the exponent over here, which is just 1. When we subtract the 6, we're going to get 3x is negative 5. And we divide by the 3, we're going to get x is negative 5 thirds. So we get negative 5 thirds. This is the final answer. If you take this exponent of negative 5 thirds and you put it in here and you add 2 to it, simplify the fraction, and then do the rational exponent business with 8 raised to that power, you're going to find that the answer comes out exactly equal to 2. All right. One last problem in this lesson. We'll get more practice in the next lesson. What if we have 27 to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 3? Again, don't be worried so much about the fact that there's multiplication and subtraction going on in that exponent. But we see that 27 and 3 can be written as the same base. 3 to the power of 3 is 27, and the exponent is 2x minus 1. When we multiply these together, because it's an exponent raised to an exponent, it's 3 times 2x minus 1, like this, uh, is equal to 3. We multiply it through, what we get is 6x minus 3. Multiply here, 6x, multiply here, minus 3. Now, bases are now the same. We set this exponent, 6x minus 3, equal to this exponent, like this. And then what we do is we add the 3, so we get 6x is equal to 4, 3 plus the 1, or 1 plus the 3, and then x is 4 divided by 6, simplify the fraction, divide by 2, and divide by 2. You get 2 thirds, that's the final answer. All right, so here in this lesson we have learned how to solve these elementary um, uh, exponential equations. But you see in every single one of these problems, here we change the problem so we had base of 3 on both sides. Here we change the problem to have a base of 3 on both sides. Here we change the problem to have a base of 2 on both sides. And that's how every one of these were solved. What we want to do is learn and get comfortable with this process. In the next lesson, I want you to follow me onto there so that you can, again, get practice with these types of problems a little bit more complicated. And just keep in mind, when we get past the next few lessons and cover the concept of a logarithm, we're going to be able to solve all of these equations and more complicated equations that are exponential equations uh, with a more powerful technique once we learn the concept of a logarithm. So make sure you can follow me and solve all of these problems. Follow me on to the next lesson and we'll continue right now.